on a sensor that will help cancer patients remember to take their meds and help improve communication with physicians. Right. Um, of your business? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, you know how it goes with startups, fast and furious. Um, uh, yeah, so the sensors that we use that you're, you're talking about are uh, um, just NFC or RFID chips, and we're talking about um, possibly involving some low-energy Bluetooth devices as well. And, and these things are really just simply stickers that we attach to pill bottles, um, blister packs. Uh, you know, you can just put these little stickers on your bathroom mirror, your kitchen table, whatever, just to act as reminders. And uh, you don't need those sensors, those RFID chips, to activate our, our patient reported outcomes system, uh, like the system. But it's, uh, it's a slick way to do it. Um, but uh, yeah, so we're getting ready to launch a pilot in uh, actually in Nashville uh, with a, a big oncology group and uh, Blue Cross in Tennessee. Um, hopefully, start enrollment in April. Last for about four months, or the, the the pilot should last for about four months. And I think from that we'll have a lot of valuable data on which direction to go with the, the user interface, the back end, the workflow tracking, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, it's been pretty exciting. And it sounded like, um, I mean, everyone thinks of Boston and New York and um, San Francisco as places where health uh, entrepreneurs are working, but um, I think everyone discovered Nashville is really um, a place to get pilots and get viable feedback. Uh, you had a good experience with the Blueprint Health? Uh, I mean, not yeah. Blueprint, sorry, Health Box. Health Box, yeah. <laughs> accelerator. No, that's all good. Um, oh, it's been awesome. And actually, through the Health Box group, um, funny you just mentioned Boston. We were just in Boston this past weekend um, tapping into their Boston network to meet with some Massachusetts Blues groups and some other uh, providers and uh, oncology centers. So uh, that's one of the beauty thing, beautiful things about Health Box is that you, you go to one location and you have access to all. So um, um, yeah, it, it, it was a really good experience to be in, in Nashville especially. For sure. And your background is actually um, uh, consumer psychology, is that right? Uh, yeah, human behavior psychology. Um, and so we have, uh, and Joanna, my other co-founder, she is the um, MBA, and plus she did a lot of time in um, life sciences, working at GSK and um, different groups like that. And so um, uh, we kind of have both sides of the coin taken care of. She's like the, the back end, uh, the, the business side, and then I'll handle um, some of the business, but more of the user interface, like how people interact with these sensors and with the, with the app and with everything and um, how do we retain those patients and I'm sure we'll talk about some of this later like how do you not be like so many of those fitness apps that you see where people use it for a week and then you know slip off um, and so we're trying to, as well, that's just one of the things this pilot's going to test us too, you know it's going to be uh, pretty interesting to see what um, sticks and what doesn't. So. And I know you all started with cancer patients. Are there other, but there's a lot of people taking really expensive drugs that people are concerned about, adherence, payers certainly, but also doctors. Mm -hmm. um, do you see, I know it's still early days, but do you see them moving on to other um, conditions? Absolutely. Um, we really want to um, stick within this oncology just to start um, because we have, you know, we have very motivated patients um, and we can really target our our design for that, but once we understand uh, what's working and what's not, we can apply it across the board. There's so many indications, like you said, that they that parallel oncology's treatment. You know, a complex dosage regimen, um, uh, lots of symptoms and things like that. Like so, for example, um, there's a um, gosh, we just actually just spoke to a doctor over at UNC, a surgeon. He's doing uh, transplants, and I didn't know this, but I guess coming out of a transplant, you're on 15, sometimes more medications for a long time and it's not just like a, uh, you get shoulder surgery and you're on you know, maybe some pain meds for a month or two you know uh, this, this is like a you know lifelong adjustment and so it's these chronic disease chronic uh, conditions that we're going to be targeting so yeah we'll, we'll definitely dive in other areas sure. yes my father-in-law got a heart transplant a few years ago and oh, um, no. Uh, yeah, I was amazed to see all those <laughs> those pill bottles. Um, uh, did he did he wean off pills as time went on, or did he does he still pretty much on um, pretty heavy regimen of different drugs? Um, he they have reduced some, 
mm. because they're very hard on your kidneys. <laughs> yeah. So they've reduced some over time, but it's and it, so it's not like thirty pills a day, but it's still fifteen. So yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, it's it is it is, and you never really understand um, how hard it is to remember. Mm -hmm. I mean, I only take antibiotics once in a while when I get sick, but I think I should be able to remember, and you really can't. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, especially when I used to doing something. I, yeah, the same thing. I had a, uh, like a viral infection, I don't know, back in October, and I had to take amoxicillin and um, like a anti, like a mucus thing or whatever it was. I screwed that up so many times. I, was, I couldn't believe it. I was like, I consider myself a pretty, you know, <laughs> on point person when it comes to stuff like that. I mean, I was lucky if a day went where I did it well. Yeah. Yes, I know it. It's it's 